Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at a pistol made by the Shanghai Arsenal in China. This is a copy of the FN-1900, and of course, uh, if you're familiar with Chinese production pistols of the Warlord era, and who wouldn't be now that I have a book on them available, uh, the FN-1900 was probably the most popular pistol manufactured in China. And much of that production were one-off, artisanal, really kind of sketchy copies covered in weird, strange markings and badly manufactured. However, there were more than a few major Chinese arsenals that were quite capable of producing Western quality mass production firearms. And one of those was the Shanghai Arsenal that made FN 1900 copies. So a little bit of background on the arsenal itself. It was formed in 1865 as a joint venture between a British customs agent and a couple of Chinese customs officers. They purchased, they were able to purchase an American ironworks company, and they sort of reinvigorated it, reset it up as an armaments manufacturer. It was able, they were able to grow the business pretty well. In 1884, they started manufacture of a copy of the Remington Rolling Block. 1891, really quite early, they were already making a copy of the Monlicker M88 straight pull rifles. Uh, by 1912, the Shanghai Arsenal had 5,000 employees. It did more than just make guns. It also produced steel for general industrial use, and they were producing 3,000 rifles, 10 million cartridges, and 1,500 tons of steel per annum. So this is a pretty substantial arsenal. It was one of the biggest arsenals in China at that time. Not, not the very biggest, but one of definitely the top tier arsenals. Shanghai was a growing and vibrant city. It was a port city, it had good access to materials, and anyway. Um, 1917, the arsenal adds production of Hotchkiss light machine guns, and ultimately it would continue to operate until 1932 when the Japanese occupied Shanghai. At that point, operations shut down. They didn't move the facility, but they did evacuate most of the machinery and the tooling to other arsenals. So that's that's the Shanghai Arsenal in a nutshell. Now let's take a look at how they made a copy of the FN-1900. The Shanghai Arsenal did a really excellent job manufacturing these pistols. They matched the standard FN production specifications in every apparent way where a lot of the artisanal copies have all sorts of really obvious manufacturing defects and shortcomings and inconsistencies, the Shanghai production guns are really quite good, which we would expect from an organization like the Shanghai Arsenal. Now to compare this to an actual Belgian FN production gun, we have a beautiful FN here and our Shanghai Arsenal. One of the things that I want to point out is on the Belgian guns, there were serial numbers in three locations. They were on the rear sight, the slide, and the frame here. And the Shanghai Arsenal actually copied that with serial numbers in exactly the same places. Now, the implications of the serial number are a little hard for us to determine. Uh, with a factory production like this, we can be quite sure that these were serially numbered. So there was a 5107 and there was a 5109. What we don't know is if they restarted their serial numbers each year, or if they had a single continuous range, and we don't know what the overall production was. Uh, author uh, Bin Shi suggests that there were 60,000 of these manufactured in 1920 alone. Uh, production ran from 1916 until 1921, and of course I should also point out the Shanghai Arsenal also made the 1900 pistol carbines, which are a uh, uh, a six inch long, longer frame, tangent sighted, really interesting gun. And I have a separate video on those that I'll link at the end of this video if you're interested. Um, but we really just don't have good context for knowing how many were produced. In a lot of the cases, uh, records were either not kept well or were destroyed. You know, when the Japanese uh, occupied Shanghai and the arsenal was shut down, there's a good chance a lot of these records simply were destroyed. Now, on the FN guns, we also have a bunch of markings on the left side. We have Belgian proofs on all three of the parts that are serialized. We have a patent marking here on the side panel and a long manufacturer's mark on the slide. The Shanghai Arsenal did not copy any of that. The whole left side of the gun is simply blank. They do, however, have markings on the grip panels. The left side grip panel here translates to Shanghai Arsenal. 
the right side translates to made for the Republic of China and uh, eighth year. So these are dated based on the Chinese Revolution of 1911. So eighth year indicates 1919 production, and it's this last bottom right character that is our specific date. That's the character eight. So you'll find these with uh, date digits that, that vary. Um, what makes these in part difficult to track is the fact that those dates are only on the grip panels, and a lot of these pistols led very hard lives, and a lot of them have destroyed grips, cracked grips, missing grips, or simply grips that are where the, the characters have been worn away and are no longer legible. And without knowing if the serial numbers repeated year after year, or if there were a single range, it's really hard for us to gather data on these. Very few of these show up for sale. Also, again, in part because they're such good copies of the FN 1900, especially with Shanghai's serial numbering system. If the grips are missing, or if you just don't pay attention to the grips on these guns, it would be extremely easy to mistake this for an actual FN production gun that simply doesn't have legible markings on it anymore. Um, I will also say the manufacturer is virtually identical to FN. The magazine release is the same slightly unusual FN system where you push in on that latch. Pull out the magazine. These are chambered for 32 ACP, same as the standard FN's. Magazine capacity is 7 rounds, same as the standard FN. Um, this was professional production by a modern industrial uh, arsenal. If you're interested in finding out more about Chinese pistols from this era, of course, perhaps I'm a bit biased, but I would suggest you check out my book on this very subject, uh, Pistols of the Warlord, Chinese Domestic Handguns 1911 to 1949, which is available and shipping from headstamppublishing.com. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I thought it'd be really cool to show you uh, some of the actual standard production, you know, machine-made, really good Chinese pistols of this period. Thanks for watching.